We've already talked about eating and cholesterol, eating in McDonald's. Well, new guidelines were recently released by a leading U.S. pediatricians group urging a more practical, common sense approach toward nutrition. And with the goal of improving children's diets and health, both in school and at home, in today's OIO In the Community Health segment, Trudy and I are going to talk more about these new guidelines and how parents can make sure they are promoting a healthy diet for their children. As we always work with our children, we want to be positive. And one of the things that this talks about is it advises parents what they should encourage their children to eat, not what not to eat. Mm. So putting that in a different perspective, it's basically the same foods that we've talked about, the five food groups that we want to make sure our children eat from are fruits and vegetables, whole grains, dairy, and proteins. And the, the goal was that we would be intentional about making sure that these children, our children, eat from all five food groups. We find that most children are avoiding vegetables. Mm -hmm. And so that making sure that they have those servings every day will make a big difference in their health. Additionally, provide a wide variety from each of those five groups. I always like to tell people, eat from the colors of the rainbow. Mm. We miss out, we get in such a rut. Um, I know as a, a mom, Jennifer, I found it was easy to make the same foods mm -hmm. day after day after day. So uh, it's encouraging parents to be more creative and maybe choose something different every week that you've never fixed before and allow your children an opportunity to try those foods. Uh, and, and then this is my favorite as being a natural um, health <laughs> doctor, is that the, you should feed children from the food groups in their most least processed state. Ah. Meaning, instead of eating apple sauce, try apple slices. Okay. Looking to make sure that the foods are getting in their whole foods form. And a fourth way there's encourage us to use a small amount of sugar, fat, and salt to transition kids into healthy foods. It's difficult if the children have not been used to healthy foods. Mm they're not gonna to wanna to eat those. So you mm -hmm. can't entirely take away the sugar, the fat, and the salt from their diets and expect them to wanna to eat. So maybe adding a little sour cream mix into dipping those vegetables or some peanut butter on that celery may help them wanna eat that, encourage them. And finally, uh, the serve appropriate size portions for the child's age. Um, and, and that's difficult because we're not always sure what is the appropriate mm -hmm. size. Well, according to building, um, buildinghealthykids.com, they have a wonderful chart there that talks about for ages one to six, fruit is a half a cup serving, vegetables is a fourth a cup, meat is one ounce, dairy is a half a cup, and grains are one ounce. So that's from ages one to six. And you about double that for children who are older than that. One word that you used is, is really good, being intentional. I think yes. that's the first thing parents have to do is we are busy, we are constantly moving. It's easier to just grab this bag of this or, or pull that thing or open this can and pour this out. But in the end, we are creating habits that aren't good, but we're also filling our kids with things that are not good. So you've presented us with five simple intentional ways to step by step make that change. And I think that's one thing that's important. Maybe we've got a parent at home saying, okay, I'm making this change tomorrow. But realistically, maybe it's something they should plan on intentionally easing in, I would imagine. Well, they are. It's important, um, again, making lifestyle changes is you have to be intentional, you have to plan ahead. And there's a couple of other suggestions I might throw out there just may help you in this process. First of all, don't ban junk food outright. Mm -hmm. Um, it's very difficult. You just It's easier to, to limit the number of treats than banning them completely. Mm. So if your children's used to eating bags of gummy bears, <laughs> heaven forbid, <laughs> but if it is something that's important to them, you don't want to take that away. So maybe you're going to have them have 10 gummy bears today, mm. and every day that's all they'll get. So making, um, being again, intentional about planning ahead for that. Another one is because when children are out of our sight, like at school, it's difficult for them to make choices. Mm -hmm. So you get that menu, I know they send it home every week, what's on the school lunch menu, and if they're going to purchase at school, go over the lunch menu with them, and then have them help you pick out what's gonna be the best choice for them, what's mm -hmm. the healthiest choice on this. Make that decision in advance, so when they get to school, they'll know what they should mm -hmm. pick out and eat. Mm -hmm. It's already been planned ahead. Um, another thing that's easy is today, Sam's Clubs and, and all these places where you can go buy bulk foods in huge quantities. Mm -hmm. And I know I had three big eaters at my home and it was easier to buy things. But when you have a big bag of cheese doodles, everyone sits there and they <laughs> consume cheese doodles. Yes. There, there's nothing left of the cheese doodles. <laughs> so my suggestion would be to put them in smaller containers. 
um, just one serving size and they can grab those containers or bags and know this is limit the amount that they have. And for tweens, tweenagers or teenagers, the easy thing is to run, we've already talked about McDonald's, to run to McDonald's uh -huh. and get a chocolate shake. Well, a chocolate shake is 880 calories. Oh my. So <laughs> drinking your calories is almost as bad as eating too many calories mm -hmm. because it goes so much quickly and you don't even realize that you're eating mm -hmm. so many.